Hello and welcome to ClickCentral.com. Um, this is the second um, video in a series around loading data into ClickView. Um, this series, is the, the, this video is the first one we're actually starting to do some some hardcore work. But I encourage you to watch the the first video, which sort of told you about the process as, as a whole. Um, this particular video, we're going to look at um, setting up a recovery process and looping through dates. So what we're going to do is an incremental load and we're going to start that process off and sort of build it up and pan it out. Um, the data I'm going to use is very simple data. Okay, so here's Adobe data. Um, set it up with um, you know, a number of dates, um, invoice number of customers. Obviously we're selling um, pets at this particular fictional company um, for quite high quantities and quite high volumes, but it looks like for hamsters. Um, we're not so worried about that at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into Click View, um, and I've already set up um, the first sort of tab, if you like, where we're loading the information in. So we'll just run that through, and we'll start building up this incremental load process. Okay, so the data's in there. I'm just going to pop date in, so we can see that. So we've got the first um, to the eighth of November. So what we'll do now is we'll just make sure um, we can load in one day at a time. So what we'll do is we'll set up a where clause around there. So where dates. So it looks like it was the first in this this format. I do believe we'll just double check. Two thousand fourteen. It's always worth making sure it's exactly. Well, you have to make sure it's exactly right. So if we load it now, we should just get one day's worth of data in, so we know that's working. Excellent. Okay. So what we're going to do now is actually set up a loop, because the idea of this incremental load recovery process is to, and by I mean recovery process, we, will, we have nothing. Um, we have potentially a lot of historic data that we need to get out before we start incremental loading. And also when you go through a change as well, sometimes if you go through a change um, in the click view design, you have to look at all the data you've extracted so far and actually start again. So you have to sort of wipe that out in a sense um, and actually begin the whole process again because you've, you've brought in new fields, you've done different transformations, that kind of thing. So the recovery process is a really helpful thing to have. Um, so we'll just go on to here and we'll set up a few more tabs. So we'll call this one set up loop. A new tab and we'll call this loop start. And the little arrow just helps sort of visualize that a little bit better. And we'll call this loop end. In fact, I've missed one, but we're not going to do it on this particular one. Um, anyway, we'll do on the next video, which is the star. So we'll just put these into order. So we're going to loop, set up loop first, then we're going to loop start, then we're going to load, then we're going to start, and then we're going to loop end. So the loop will be going round the load, start, load, start, load, start, and um, for all the different days that we want. So we're in set up loop. What we'll do is we'll set up a couple of variables. Um, so start date. Um, be the obvious one, and then obviously the next one would be end date. Can't type. There we go. I can't. There we go. Oh dear. Get my CD right. There we go. Um, so the start date we're gonna we're actually gonna prefix that into a, um, a number. Um, and the way to do all that, we will look at our requirements and see how far we've got to go back. And this instance is about 1st of November, we know that. So, what I'll do is I'll set up a new Excel instance and do 1st of November. I know that's 2014, so that's how I did it. Yep. So, what I'll just do now is convert this into a number. It's the easier way to do it. Let me get this number there 419444, which is the 1st of November. So, I'll go back in there. And that's going to be our start date. Now the end date, we can set a number just like we just did then, you know, for the for the end of November or whatever day it is. Um, but it would make more sense to sort of do today minus one. What I'm just going to do at this point, just make sure that today minus one gives us a right number. Uh, okay. Oh, not exit script, is it? It's, it's exit script. Check the variable ed editor. 
Yep, yeah, we've got some two dates there. So start date 41944, four, and that's 41954, and that should be today minus one, which is now the 11th. So if we pop this back into here, we can check it. It's the 11th, it makes sense. So now we've got sort of a start and end date. So the idea is, is we're going to loop through um, from the start date to the end date. And we're going to bring the information out one day at a time. So these way to that is, is a for next loop. Um, so the for next loop, um, for those who don't know, will work through um, numbers incrementally, depending on how you, you set a step. But the, the standard one would be for, you know, we'll call it Cursor to equal 1 to 100. So the loop, if we set that up like that, would just keep going through uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that, that variable um, will, will contain this number within the variable. Okay. But the actual end of the loop doesn't want to be here. The end of the loop wants to be over here. So we're going to put that there. Okay. So now we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we don't want to go 1, 2, 3, 4 because that doesn't make any sense. What we actually want to use is the start date and the end date. Okay. Oh, that's not right. And what am I do? Because I got the variable name wrong. Let's remove that just for my OCD, so we don't end up building variables that we don't need. Okay, so we start here to end date. So it's going to start at four one nine four four and keep going four one nine four five, four one nine four six, etc. etc. until it hits the number which is today minus one. Um, well, that number was. Okay, so it's going to load through. At the moment, the where close always just set to do to sort of pick this date out, so that's not going to help us a great deal. So what we'll do is we'll set this information out and we'll set this into loop start. So here we will set, um, we'll call it the date to load. Okay, so we don't want it quite like that. So we want the, that's going to be the format, so we'll just put it there for reference so we know what the format is. And the, it's going to be a date. Um, it's going to be a, the cursor number. So at this point, it's still in that that sort of num numeric format, which is good for looping, not great for where closers. So we'll set the format of that. It has to be right. That's why it's always good just to have that comment there, just so you know what the format uh, should be. And we'll take this information now and we'll replace it here. Okay, so the idea of this is it's going to loop through, starting on the 1st of November, and it'll loop through this, this data load, and it will bring back the, the, the cursor value, which at the beginning will be the 1st of November, set it to a date format in that variable, which will be, you know, 0111-2014, and we will load on that particular um, the where clause. So we're going to get the first in first. So if I exit script here, we should be able to test that. There we go. And we've got nothing. So let's just check the variable. I know what I've done. You have to put that in the push bits. There we go. Well done for anyone who spotted that. There we go. First one in 2014. So if we take this out, and we could probably move too quick to see it. Um, can I sleep? I slowed it down just so you, I could deselect that because um, otherwise it's too quick to catch it. Um, and then we've done what we expected. The, the first line of data, we have two dates, then one, two, three, four, five, six. But obviously, we've got a lot of information that didn't have anything at all, which took us right up to the 11th of November. So we can see taking two lines and add additional one, additional two, you know, so on and so forth. And then the last sort of days here, 
Um, there was no data to collect anyway, so it went to find it. It was nothing there, returned by nulls. Because um, the the fields are identical, um, what Clearview will have done is is um, concatenated that automatically, so we didn't tell it not to. So what we'll be left with is a table with all the information in there um, that we need. Okay. So that's that's sort of working now. We'll get rid of the sleep. Um, that's that's working now. What we want it to do. So what we're going to talk about in the next video is, is actually storing that, but not just storing it into a QVD file, which just there it is. Obviously, what we want to be able to do is store it in each incremental load, and then drop that table. So the next time it comes through, it's it's only selecting. It's not building up over time. Um, it's doing it one day at a time. So we're going to do that in the next video. We're talking about how to store, how to ensure a QVD file exists, how to append it, and we're also going to look at how to make sure that that none of that information in there is accidentally duplicated. Once we've done that, we're going to have further videos. We're going to expand this process more. We're talk about incremental loads. We're going to talk about how to catch up days that you've missed, etc. So there's a lot to do. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Um, if you obviously click visit uh, clickcentral.com uh, for all the different um, blog posts on there and um, thanks very much.